Hello guys again for another standard deck tech for Atlas of Thunder Junction. We take a look of a version with uh, black, green, and blue, which is the Sultai colors. And uh, we know that uh, the reprint of the fixed lens for the enemy colors has somewhat made this deck uh, more efficient on the curve. And so I've decided to check on a reference list and do some uh, adjustments in the build and uh, here is the first uh, kind of version that I came up with so the deck is mostly made of several creature curves as you can see here with a few spot removals and counter spells that is why do we need to have added the uh, counter spells as I said that the efficiency of this lens with the reprint of botanical sanctum and blooming marsh which uh, made this one uh, possible so we're going to do a quick rundown of this build uh, we don't uh, really need to uh, go beyond uh, with the sideboard first but uh, let's uh, maybe have a different video out of that one so anyway we have this curve for the one drop so you can see here three copies of spyglass siren this is just a way to get you some map tokens for you to utilize which later on can lead you to card draw your extra lands or filter out the top card of your library for uh, digging out the needed creature or spell for example so with this we need to go now for the two drops which again compose of the efficient uh, deep cavern bat that can disrupt your opponent's hand and uh, make a strategy out of his or her succeeding turns then we have also Moss for Dread Knight, which is another card draw effect that can also be casted for a 2-2, two, 2-mana two, uh, two 3-2, two, which uh, can also become a good threat early on, as you would need only to have this one traded or not exile effect, uh, because of when it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. So that we also added a copy of uh, Fairy Master Mind because again we have access to blue. This is also would be an efficient uh, attacker with the evasion and can also have this effect that uh, opponents uh, drawing off your second card is turn you can draw a card also. And that uh, we have the new card, the legendary plant druid, the uh, bristly bill, spine sower. This is uh, more of now. A way to pump up your dudes because of the slant for effect that uh, you can put up some counter on target teacher and later on this can also double the number of some counters by having this uh, five mana activated ability so this would also mean that curving out with a turn two bat for example and turn three bristly beer in the play land would mean that you can add up some counter on your bat therefore making it more efficient as a 2-2 flying lifelink in the damage race for example will also get you to have a good threat of an attack and also which uh, mean that we have several map tokens here that has created so those map tokens can also put some counters on your creature so not uh, that's not that does not mean necessarily that you need to landfall to put those counters in any way you can still have this uh, card as a good way to double those number of counters in the late game for this five man activation on that we have uh, now this variance of three drops in the deck uh, first off i've uh, considered uh, three copies of uh, spiritual bliskism again because this is probably the most efficient way to curve out in the deck at the same time gets you card advantage and board advantage with these uh, vampire tokens i've also added uh, a sentinel of the city because again map tokens are also important here in this kind of deck and also gets you a 3-4 body with vigilance which is also good blocker on its own and then we have a copy of lord skeeter silver king i am uh perception that uh, the uh, Timur control decks or the lands decks would still be a popular archetype in the standard format hence you would need to have a way a main deck to somewhat uh, disrupt their card advantage and having Lord Skeeter would also get you to exile cards from your opponent's graveyard at the same time creating this 1-1 uh, black rat creature token as an added creature to your board and that of course Geeks is also a good curve in this deck because of the cardo effects also and works well with the bat uh, deep cavern bat uh, setup and uh, curving out example you can 
turn 1 silent, turn 2 cavern bat, and 2 geeks would garner you 2 additional card draws oh, by earliest turn 3. So that um, may seem that you have already refilled your hand. At the same time, establish a good threat on the board with this kind of uh, build, for example. For that is for your 3 drops. Now for your 4 drops, we have 2 copies of uh, Air Star Resurrected and of course Soldier Apocalypse as the best for drop for any black based decks. Air Tide would again act here as a counter in spot removal because of its ability that uh, it is basically a hard counter and uh, it would only have your opponent uh, draw a card but with children in play it would definitely punish them for drawing the card and therefore losing two life in the process. And now for the only five drop in the deck is a copy of Aklasot's Deepest Betrayal that can also be a very resilient to any destroy effects as it when it dies it will become just a temple of the dead at the same time it would also have your opponent discard a card whenever they attack so also a flyer lifelink would also mean that the uh, damage uh, raise potential is also do done on this deck in the mid game and for your instance again i mentioned earlier spot removals are also important as well as counter spells because we now have blue we have two copies of Bitter Triumph that can also deal with Planeswalkers. Uh, cut down would also go with the uh, uh, sideboard or main deck uh, creature kill for uh, aggro matchups, especially Boros and Mono Red. And then two copies of Go for the Throat for any uh, defeated target, especially for against Rakdos or other Sultai Mirror, for example. And then counter spells, we have two copies of Make Disappear. And of course, Castle One would be easily played by several token producers here in the deck. And also, we have uh, considered a copy of Disruption Protocol because tapping an untap artifact would also be very uh, efficient in this kind of build because we have several map token generators, such as this one, Red Sentinel, and Spyglass Siren, as a additional cost for having only this one paid for two blue mana. Now, the only creature or the planeswalker in the deck i have uh, somewhat still under uh, uh, the testing phase because of its ability but uh, a codering leader would uh, i think would go here as a good uh, mid-game strategy because it can also create an army of uh, elk creature tokens at the same time gets you to draw cards but the bonus here is that you can have this one a copy of up to one target creature you control at the level turn except that he has x probe so in any case copying uh picture of schism for example or sentinel would also get you to have a good uh, additional threat to your board and also copy those uh, abilities at the same time and also if you have be able to ultimate you minus five for each another non-land permanent you control create a token that's copy of that permanent so it's not really that that impactful but uh, in any case you would still have this good uh, minus five ability in your uh, setup with this planeswalker and then your lands as uh, mentioned mana fix would go with the four copies of uh, blooming mars botanical sanctum and dark Lake shores and we have also a man land with the uh, restless cottage but also add, added as a threat with a four four ability that this become a green horror creature token that can Exile a card from graveyard also, the same exile strategy and also creating a food token. Uh, mana fix with Shepherd Marsh and uh, Underground River. And of course, basic lands are also added here as well as channel lands with Otawara and Takinuma. And since we have several legends here in the deck, I think uh, channeling those uh, lands would uh, really help you out to be cheaper and as uh, more efficient than uh, regular uh, mana cost to pay for this one and last but not the least are your curve which we have 2.42 it's pretty much low for this kind of deck but uh, we need also 25 lands because we need to have a good curve early on and we don't really need to worry about those extra cards as we can still have those uh, fix with the uh, activation for several cards of this deck for example you can discard extra cards to better triumph or use them uh, as uh, mana fix to pump up or activate these abilities of your creatures and for color distribution we have mostly black with 30 
and secondly with blue with 11 and green is 8 but the producers are pretty much uh, quantified with blue black as uh, 19 for black it's still the most uh, or the highest uh, uh, color for this uh, three color deck uh, setup and uh, last but not least we have again the tokens which we need of course to represent the effects that is added by your creatures or your uh, our artifacts or the lands so we have a bat token food map token rat token and the vampire token so i guess that's it for this kind of uh, deck tech again we know that uh, sultai is uh, probably one of the stronger tricolor deck setup and i'm happy again that uh, we'll be seeing this kind of build in standard where in we just now avoiding the painlands uh, setup because we call these reprints of uh, blooming marsh and botanical sanctum so for any case that you would need to comment on this build just let me know in the comments below we can have a good discussion of this deck tech as well as other archetypes that you are uh, thinking in mind that uh, would be also popular in this uh, meta game of standard with outlaws of thunder junction again guys thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe notifications on and see you on the next video